had some time today, so I figured I could either wash my makeup brushes or make a video. So obviously I'm making a video. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope this looks okay. I keep messing with my setup and then trying to get it to look normal again. And um, I think I just need a bigger house. I think I just need um, my own space so I don't have to constantly move um, that. And you know, obviously I just need some more practice and better equipment. But um, if you're here, <laughs> that's where I'm at. Um, but anyway, I wanted to jump in and talk about the upcoming Sephora sale. And um, in my last video, I went through category by category, and I'll link that in the description box, where I just picked my favorites from every category. So if you're looking for a foundation or a concealer or you know a lot of those staples um, that I won't necessarily be picking up, this go around because you know it, I run out of foundation but of most of the other categories it takes longer than six months to run out so I'm not re-upping on all of those things but I do think it's important to talk about the tried and true items that aren't just the newest because the newest is not always the best so um, I definitely wanted to go through and include that now today I just sort of want to go through my list and um, you know there are different categories for this sale so things that I'm replacing um, so those are the staples <laughs> the things that have been out for a while and I've had time to gather my thoughts so I'm either going to be repurchasing or you know some of the things that have been out for longer that I've had an opportunity like the Patrick Ta palette you know that's been out for I don't know a year or at least half a year and I feel like even though you know even without having the palette I've been able to sort of get some amount of clarity um, and decide whether it is or isn't a good purchase I do try to hold off you know, a lot of these things, especially, you know, it's the seasons changing and brands are coming out with um, a lot of complexion products right now. Blush is very popular in, in particular. Um, you know, the stuff that comes out, I feel like anyway, right before the sale is usually the stuff that sort of gets some viral hype to it and the sale is just a perfect opportunity so it's like the perfect storm of impulse purchasing um and i usually fall prey to that <laughs> um i remember i think it was during the last sale i'm not even sure it's all a blur but the Givenchy concealer for example that got so much hype and that came out right before the sale so it was easy to justify <laughs> trying that Whereas if that had come out, you know, mid-season, I would have had at least three months of reviews to, you know, sort of weigh the pros and cons. And I wouldn't just impulse say, it's worth trying, because how bad could it be? You know, enough people like it, it's gotten enough attention that it seems like a safe bet. Um, you know, I do let myself make some of those purchases because they're fun, you know. It's fun to be able to try the hot new item, <laughs> um, no matter who you are. I mean, I understand that. Too. So I, I sort of set aside a certain amount of purchases for that. Um, but I try to be more critical and hold off, especially things that are uh, on the pricier side. You know, if a new foundation comes out right before the sale, people with dry, mature skin love it, you know, I'm going to want to try it. But I find anyway that 20% off is not enticing enough for me to buy like a $70 um, foundation just because I, you know, it's getting so much attention and then six months from now it turns out that it's not really as good as people thought you know I have that experience I'm not 
you know, it's certainly not to say that there aren't creators that are dishonest about how much they like something. <laughs> um, I think a lot of them are. They get, you know, affiliate link money for people making those purchases. But I know, you know, I myself get excited about, you know, potentially something working out for me. And then a month goes by and I realize just by using it that it's not quite what I thought at first. You know, I think some of that is just natural. So I do, you know, I like to take my time. You know, that's why I didn't get the Patrick Ta palette last time because I just felt like I needed to marinate more on the palettes that I had, what I really thought about that formula instead of um, getting it just to get it and then having it collect dust. Um, I have enough products collecting dust. So, you know, as time goes on, as my collection gets bigger, I just need to be more critical. You know, I have one face, <laughs> I can't, possibly use all of the makeup I have in a single lifetime and it doesn't last forever so you know I really feel like at this point in my journey um, I need to be more critical about what I'm willing to spend my money on so with that being said you know the other thing that happened today that sort of sparked my thought process about this was the rare beauty blushes came out um, and those are beautiful. They're extremely eye-catching <laughs> in the palette. And, you know, they look very enticing. Um, and that is, you know, they're $26. So I'll let myself get one. I'm gonna keep it to one though, <laughs> because I don't think that's a formula that's going to be particularly flattering on my skin. Um, it's very highlighting <laughs> and I feel like, um, you know, if this came out three months ago, I would have had more time to digest my thoughts. Whereas right now, I'm just going to add it to the list because 20% off $26, it's cheap enough. I might as well try it, you know? So that's a purchase that's, you know something that I'll allow myself, but I do need to be better about picking a color. You know, I spent this morning going through my blushes that I felt like were the most similar. Um, I didn't go through all of my luminous blushes because I have a ton. You know, I have, you know, NARS Orgasm is one. I have one of the Armani blushes that came out, <laughs> I think, before the one of the sales, so I justified that. Um, the hourglass blushes, they're very luminous, um, but these are like a next level, like they're more luminous than the RMS blushes by a long shot. Actually, I thought the Nabla, um, the skin glaze was the most similar, um, but you know, I don't use this because of the shade. I just, I don't find this shade particularly flattering on me, but you know, I have some of it on today. I used it as kind of a topper, um, but I don't find the sheen to it to, you know, be a deal breaker. So, you know, it's pretty shiny. It's pretty highlighting. So I figured if I could get away with this formulaically, you know, it would be worth trying, but I'd need to do some soul searching about color <laughs> because if it's not a color I like, I'm just not going to use it no matter what the formula is. So, you know, that's an example of something that is definitely on my wish list, but I, I need to narrow down the color and it'll probably make it into the next stage of this, which will be my actual cart. <laughs> um, and I'll try to post about, you know, what I actually, you know, graduates into my cart and comes home with me and I'll do a haul at the end and all of that. But um, outside of that, I guess, I guess I'll start with what's on my wish list. Um, 
and just go through things that way. <laughs> um, so number one is the blush. That's the most recent addition. Then I have the Sephora Favorites Clean Me Up Kit. I spoke about this a little bit in my last video and I'm mainly getting it because I, I know that this Lawless lip gloss is a good lip gloss. And between that and the Tower 28 mascara, it's worth it, it's worth the $35. So, you know, assuming this is still available, um, which I hope it is, I'm just going to get this kit and I'm not going to think too much harder about it. You know, I looked at some of these other items that I don't really want, but to me, I don't dislike them enough for it to make the whole thing not worth getting. So that was the conclusion that I came to about that. Next on my list, I have the Patrick Ta and the Makeup by Mario, the two neutral palettes. Um, I went in depth <laughs> thinking about these. I compared them to my Matte Viseart palette, which I love. That's my favorite neutral palette. I did a look with my the mattes from my Patrick da Ta Major Dimension One palette because my number two palette went bad and got moldy um number one seems okay <laughs> so i used that and then the next day i used the mattes from my other the my makeup by mario ethereal eyes which i've heard is the same formula as this and then on the third day i did a look with my busy art shadows it sort of got me to the conclusion that that's the best formula. No contest. Um, the Patrick Ta and the Makeup by Mario, they're both powdery. The Patrick Ta is less powdery and more pigmented. The Makeup by Mario, because it's less pigmented, um, a lot of people say that those sh kind of shadows are better for beginners because they're easier to blend. Unfortunately, that was not my experience. When I blended these shadows, I felt like they would blend away. And then what was left behind would get patchy. So, I mean, it could be partially lack of skill. <laughs> I'm definitely not the most skilled when it comes to makeup. But when I did the two looks with the Patrick Ta and Makeup by Mario, I like the Patrick Ta so much better just because it looked smoother my blends look smoother with that palette now you would think that would lead me to the conclusion that if i bought either of these i would get the patrick ta however i also had to take color story into consideration and even though i have gray shades in other palettes that look exactly like this shade in the Makeup by Mario. You know, to me, the gray was one of the ones that stood out as making this palette different. While I feel like I can definitely dupe that gray shade, I felt like ultimately the color story overall was still something that I would get enough use out of that it was worth the purchase because of the price point. That's the other factor. So we have quality, color story, and price point. So when really breaking it down and thinking about all of those things together, I felt like I could justify that purchase with the sale. The Makeup by Mario palette is not something I would purchase full price because I don't like the formula enough. And I don't think those colors are so unique that I couldn't find it in my collection as it is. The thing that it had going for it was it's not too expensive. So because of that, I think I am going to go ahead and try it. Um, something could change last minute and I could talk myself out of it, but because it's the only eyeshadow on my list, I feel okay enough to justify it. Um, 
the eyeshadow palette that I really want is the the new spring palette by Unearthly. Um, that I it's coming out sometime in April. I'm not sure when, but that's a palette I'm really excited about. I know I like the formula. I'm excited for the color story. Um, that's a no brainer. You know, there's no other shadows though from Sephora that I feel that way about. Um, there's no palettes on the horizon anyway. You know, Natasha Denona, you know, at some point <laughs> um, might come out with a palette that is tempting to me. But right now, at least, um, there's just nothing that I'm all that excited for. So it, it sort of allowed me to justify this one. Um, that being said, I don't think it's a smart purchase. You know, <laughs> I don't think all of my purchases have to be 100%. This makes the most sense. You know, if I were to trim the fat, this would be the first thing to go because I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think it's conditionally worth it. <laughs> um, so it's just one of the things that I'm trying despite my own judgment, I guess, <laughs> um, is the bottom line. So, the next thing on my list I have is the Fleur, um, the Vanilla Skin. I have the small bottle of this, and here I have the big bottle. This is, um, you know, I'm, I'm really on the fence about this one still, because I love that fragrance mist. I use it almost every day, and it brings me so much joy. It just doesn't stick around. It doesn't have the staying powder. So, you know, I think what's gonna determine whether or not this makes it into my cart is what my totals are. Like when I really put things in my basket and I see the discount applied, that total is going to impact my decision on something like this, which is something that I would like, but I don't feel like I need. Um, you know, I do wish that they would come out with this in a perfume because I like it so much, but, you know, body mist, like, you know, I don't know. I just, I wish they had a different version of it. Um, the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This is one of, well, this is my holy grail foundation from Sephora. It's my favorite. Um, I've tried so many. Um, one of my future soon videos is going to be um, a foundation breakdown because I've tried so many, especially those marketed to my skin type, you know, dry, mature, less than perfect skin <laughs> to say the least. Um, and this absolutely takes the cake. My biggest problem is finding my shade. So I've tried at least five different <laughs> shades at this point. Um, and I just keep buying them and mixing them and getting it good enough. You know, I have it on today and I'm like, good enough. That's how I feel with most of the shades that I've tried. So I'm just going to try again, you know. It's, um, right now I have Patagonia in my cart. I know that's way too deep. Um, so I'm probably going to go with a lighter one. But I do like the undertones for this one, so... I could always mix it with a much lighter shade and just call it a day and stop trying to get, get it perfect because it never seems to work out. But I do really like that foundation enough that I'll buy it anyway. Um, next on my list, I have the Patrick Ta Major Headlines, the new cream and powder blush duos. The shade I want is out of stock. So I have one of these in you know, the old colors from a few years ago. The color I got is terrible for me, but I really like the formula, so I do really want these blushes, but I don't think the formula is so unique that I would go with my second choice. My, my first choice color is the not too mu much soft rosy taupe. My number two is She's the Moment Soft Tangerine Golden Peach. I don't think that's going to be very flattering on my skin tone. So in the past, I would want to try it so bad that I would just go with my number two choice. I'm not going to do that this time around. 
if this blush doesn't come, if this comes back in stock, I'm getting it, absolutely. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna skip. I just I have too many blushes. I have too many really beautiful blushes <laughs> that um, I don't need to compromise. You know, if it really means that much to me, I can just wait till the December sale and uh, I'm sure it'll be back by then. November, December, whatever the next sale is, that's perfectly fine. You know, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. So then I have the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm Serum. I am trying this because I am really hoping to find a new primer that works for me because currently I love the Bobbi Brown. I wasn't able to get that on sale this year. I refuse to pay full price for that. Um, I think it's good, but I don't think it's $70 good. So, you know, right now I'm making do with just moisturizer as primer, but I did want to try this. Um, I figured if it doesn't work under makeup, because it might not, you know, this is some, you know, different type of ingredients. <laughs> I'm not the type that I can just put anything on as primer and have it work out. You know, I don't really work well with oil primers and this to me has a similar finish to that. So I'm like very much expecting it not to work. <laughs> but I figured I could use it to slug possibly, you know, when I go to bed, sometimes my skin truly is painfully dry. So I feel like this is something I could use as a balm. Um, for comforting my extra dry skin. I would love for it to work as a primer. <laughs> so I'm pretty positive I am gonna try this, but you know, I, I'm trying this with a lot of thought <laughs> um, that I've already put into accepting if it, you know, if it doesn't work for the purpose I'm hoping it will work for. Um, next, I have the Dew Instant Angel. This is not in stock. I have a feeling it will be um, in time for the sale. It's, you know, one of my favorite moisturizers, so I'm gonna keep my eye out for that. Um, I'm not trying the Air Angel Peptide Gel Cream version, only because I have really sensitive skin. And this has some ingredients that I'm a little afraid won't work for me. Um, and it's just like a little bit too expensive for me to try something that I don't think is gonna work for me. Um, but I do like the Dew skincare in general. Um, I've, I've had good luck with the, um, the serum and the under eye serum, uh, whatever, the serum for under the eyes. I like that as well. Um, I just am not really in the market for any of those other things right now. Um, I also don't generally buy my skincare from Sephora. I don't think they have the best prices. <laughs> I think you can get better sales from other stores. So then I have the Pharmacy Lip Smoothie Peptide Lip Balm. I only have this on here because it's honey vanilla. And I really like honey and vanilla. I like the way it smells. I want to eat it <laughs> like, you know, but um, I, think, I think we're now past the point of things that are definitely things I'm gonna get. Um, everything from this point forward are things that are wants, but not needs. You know, this for 22 bucks, you know, even on sale, I think it's too expensive. It's in a pot, I don't like that. You know, I don't know. I'm really kind of on the fence about that lip product. I have the K-Skin um, Lip Balm SPF. I have this purely for the SPF. It's my favorite lip SPF. Um, I have one of these that I'm pretty sure is empty because I can't seem to squeeze any more out. Um, you know, this is something that I go through it really fast, so I'm not sure it's the most cost effective. Well, I know it's not the most cost effective lip, lip SPF, but I like the color and everything about it enough that it's, you know, something that I would add to my cart on sale, you know, pretty easily. I could justify that. <laughs> um, 
you know, these are purchases based on my totals. And I guess to once I make my initial high priority purchase, once that's out of the way and I can like breathe a little bit and look over my finances, then I'll make my um, decision about the rest of these things. So that's on the list. Also on the list with the same caveats is the Glow Recipe Cloudberry Bright Essence Toner. Um, this is something that looks nice. Um, I don't think there's anything about it that is going to be life-changing enough to be worth it. <laughs> you know, as far as Glow Recipe goes, it's not that expensive at $38, but um, yeah. I'm like really on the fence about this one. I think it's just going to be like yet another decent toner. That's not, you know, going to be all that life changing one way or another. Um, things that are not on my list anymore are the Summer Fridays lip oil. Um, this did not get good reviews and I no longer want this. Um, the, okay, I, well, I guess there's like two more things that I think are worth talking about. I have the House Labs Concealer. Um, this is another one that I'm on the fence about. I actually bought this during the last sale, but I didn't, the shade I got was just a little too deep for me, so I gave it to my sister. And I, when I, the, you know, the time I had it, I liked it, um, but I didn't love it. So it's been on my list as something that I kind of want to try again, only because it's more high coverage than most of the concealers that I have. I really don't have any other concealers um, that are flexible enough to wear under the eyes and have that much coverage. So that's another thing that's kind of on my ambivalent list. And then finally, I have the Dr. Dennis Gross, the, um, lip treatment, the plumper. Um, this is something that my sister bought and I tried it at, when I was home at Christmas and I liked it. Um, you know, I'm sort of on the fence because do I think it's better than any other lip plumper? No, <laughs> I really don't. But, you know, I felt like it was slightly more effective maybe than some of them and it was not that um it didn't hurt my you know it didn't damage my lips like some of the more intense plumpers I've tried I feel like I'm not gonna wear that every day because you know my lips would be crusty and fall off so this was one that I felt like could achieve more of a plumping effect but you know, didn't have the extreme irritation attached. I don't know. And okay, now we're actually at the point on the list where these are some of my, these are what's left over from my loves list from the last sale. So um, just really quickly, I have the YSL Lash Clash. I'm gonna skip on that because I, you know, I have the Tower 28 in my basket, basically, at this point. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Wand Blush. I'm, I'm over this. I have too many that are too similar to that. Um, I have the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum. I've talked myself out of this. <laughs> um, I just don't think it's hydrating enough. And I have the Commodity Gold and Commodity Milk Travel um, Perfumes. Um, I'll admit, I, I think I am actually getting, getting one of these. I'm going to actually take the time right now to move it <laughs> to um, my, the top of my list so I remember to get it. I have the milk version of this, so I'm gonna get the gold one this time. I really love both of those scents. They're very vanilla based. Um, and I guess that's it. Maybe real quick, I'll talk about the Summer Fridays Rich, Rich Cushion Cream Moisturizer. I bought that during the last sale. I tried it, I don't like it. Um, it smells like it went bad. 
Um, generally, I don't ascribe to clean beauty. Um, I find it offensive <laughs> because I think they're fear mongering, taking advantage of people who are afraid of really heartbreaking things like cancer and using that and weaponizing that. Um, so I am not somebody who buys something based on that. I'll buy it despite that. Like if something's um, clean beauty and um, you know, it looks like something I want to try, I'll buy it anyway, but it's not something I look for to say the least. Um, that being said, um, this was interesting to me just because, you know, it was supposed to be ultra hydrating and plumping. I found it hydrating. I wouldn't say plumping, but the fact that it smelled rancid just, I, I mean, I used it up because I paid for it, but it's not something I would ever buy again, unfortunately. Um, and then, yeah, we have like the YSL uh, candy glaze. I bought that. I love it. Um, the Tower 28 Serum Concealer, that was just okay. I go over all these things in my last video, so I don't need to go on and on and make this an hour like most of my videos end up being, but um, that's just what's on my list. Hello, so something that I forgot to do that is like the most important thing <laughs> um, in one of these Sephora videos is talk about the price breakdown between um, what I'm definitely getting and what I just want. So I took some screen records and I went over my two very different carts. <laughs> um, my first cart is containing all of the things that I talked about in the beginning of the video that are things that I'm definitely getting. Um, so we have the high priority items. Um, that came to a total of $236 before the discount. So $236 um, minus the 20% off would be $47.20 and that would be a total of $188.80. So what's probably gonna happen is that'll be my first purchase. Um, just the things that, you know, I know for sure that I'm getting. Then just for fun, <laughs> um, I did a total of all of the additional things. So if I were to just add all of those things into my basket, um, that would bring me to a total of $483. With my 20% off, that would take off $96.60. So that would bring my total to $386. Um, if I'm really honest, <laughs> I have definitely spent that much during the Sephora sale in the past. Um, I think my totals for the last few sales have been just under 500. So that's how I stay rouge. Um, it's really because I make all of my purchases <laughs> during these sales, but I buy a lot. <laughs> so um, there is a good chance that I do actually spend the 386. Um, you know, to have everything I want is an additional 247. So it ju it's just about double. <laughs> um, it's just about doubling my orders from everything I really want to like everything I want and then all the extra stuff that is less necessary. So, I mean, um, on one hand, I think that um, I do need to try to edit myself to stay closer to my original cart, the original items that total 236, but if I really screw up and get everything, it's still under $400. So that's always my goal is to do a little bit better than the year before. So um, I'll keep everyone posted and let you know how good I do. Um, yeah, that and I did leave out the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bra on the Go. I forgot to include that um, as one of the things. I really like the contour in that. So um, I did want to mention that just because I totally forgot to mention that in the video, but um, that's about it. Um, so. 
you know, we'll see. I feel like fortunately this year, I don't, I have zero items that I feel like I need to wait until the strike of, I don't even know what time. I know Ulta um, the next day starts at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what that time is for Sephora, like what, what time the sale technically starts in my time zone. I'm, I'm going to look it up because, you know, I'm just always curious about stuff like that. You know, and I might, st you know, because I'm a night owl, I might stay up and, you know, pick up the favorite set because I think that'll sell out. That being said, I don't feel pressured. Like if that sells out, I'm not going to be heartbroken. And this year, unlike most years, there is not a single thing on this list that I feel like I will be upset if it sells out. Not a single thing. Um, that's new for me. <laughs> That is an absolute first. Um, generally, I think the fall sales are more exciting. I think there's more products coming out around that time. Um, you know, it's just, it's the, the, all the retailers are releasing everything before the holidays. So it's a more hyped sale. But even last spring, I know that there were definitely products that sold out and I was very upset and what have you. This year, I'm good. Like, I don't have that pressure, which I think is fabulous. I don't like the FOMO and the urgent purchasing and all of that. You know, on the flip side, <laughs> I love makeup and I like to be excited about things. So, you know, I'm sort of I guess we're right down the middle. <laughs> like, there are some exciting things here. But, um, you know, nothing that I'm going to cry over if I can't get. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, I really hope everybody's having a fabulous week. And um, let me know down below. What are you getting in this sale? Is your list um, longer or shorter than most years? And how excited are you for this go around? You know, I think this blows the Ulta sale out of the water because they really screwed up <laughs> with changing that. Um, that'll be interesting to see for the next sale what Ulta does because that was not exciting. That was that was a true letdown. <laughs> um, at least with the Sephora sale, you know, it's the same as it is every year, and um, I will be participating. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, without rambling too much more, I hope everybody is having a beautiful evening and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, and real quick, <laughs> I made this shirt. I used to silk screen a lot and most of my shirts have fallen apart because they're just so old. But this is one of the few that has made it and the paint is still visible and I just think it's such a pretty color. But. Anyway, um, I have a big craft graveyard. I've tried a lot of things, so <laughs> this just another thing on that list. Um, but anyway, bye-bye.